Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Hancock. I am the vice president of the USA chapter of the International Humanistic Management Association and the founder of Humanist Learning Systems, which is our education partner for this forum. Today, we have, um, we're going to be talking about project management stakeholders, roles and sustainabilities. And I'm going to introduce our guest in just a second. But first, I want to introduce my co host, Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Castillo at Arizona State University. Thank you so much for joining us here. We're really happy to see you. She's also the secretary of the USA chapter of our board. <laughs> so our guest today is Raji Sivaraman. Uh, she's a Singapore citizen and she helps the U USA and Singapore companies with strategic planning, startups. She speaks several languages. She helps Fortune 500 companies with um, CSR and mobility projects. She's a consultant, a director, a strategic advisor, and an advisory board member working in IT. She's published, she does logistics. She's just really, really impressive. <laughs> So Raji, thank you so much for coming here to talk to us today. My pleasure, my pleasure. All right, let me um, let me share the screen so that we can get your presentation going. All right. Take it away, Raji. Hello, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Thank you to the U United Nations PRME, Ima, and specifically to Jennifer and Elizabeth for inviting me to buzz off this year with me talking about project management stakeholder roles in sustainability. I'm just going to give my thoughts and then I'm sure you all have plenty more thoughts on all of the things that I'm going to be talking about. Next slide, please. So let's start from what is project management? So according to the Project Management Institute, project management is the use of specific knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to deliver something of value to people. Now, what do they say about project managers then? They say project managers are organized, passionate, goal-oriented, who understand the projects have common, what they have in common, and their strategic role in how organizations succeed, learn, and change. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yes, okay, no, that's fine. All right, having said that, let me give you just a few examples of the stakeholders involved in projects. So they could be financiers, suppliers, vendors, consultants, uh, customers, end users, project managers, team managers, resource managers, really all kinds of managers, um, it could also be executives, senior management, company owners, investors, sponsors. They're all in one way or the other managing projects, right? So let me just touch on just a few of their roles to keep within the time that we have today. Next slide, please. So. I found this SDG wedding cake in Wikipedia Commons, Wikimedia Commons, thought it was quite interesting, so I decided to put it in here. So sustainability managers, their duties include the research, development, and implementation of policies that improve the organization's environmental impact without detracting from other business goals. They are actually also responsible for ensuring adherence to all of the laws and the industry regulations. Now, the role of management, they, um, while leadership is concerned with strategic vision, management um, is concerned with the operational decision-making. Both of them have the role integrated all necessary resources and capabilities to produce goods and services able to bring a sustainable, 
competitive advantage. Now, team members role in sustainability. So for example, green team members, they are responsible for say, helping to implement the goals and objectives of the organization's sustainability program. They are also the ambassadors for promoting sustainability within their own department and for identifying achievements, opportunities maybe, and struggles for uh, communication back to the team. Suppliers, now their roles are to make sure there is no, say, bribery, low wages, um, working standards, trans uh, transparency, um, child labor, uh, whether it is upstream or downstream. So downstream meaning for the society at large, the consequences such as harm in any form or manner. So every pro project therefore needs to keep a close eye on all of these. So if a automaker say, for example, um, does something in the car that uh, is the cause for accidents, or maybe in the food industry, you know, some one of the food um, ingredients is making you more obese than you should be. A lot of things like that, just a few examples. Now, financiers, the role of financiers in the sustainability arena is to fund the projects that will influence sustainable development. Their primary roles are making aware and promoting green bonds, fossil free investment uh, funds, Therefore, projects need to make decisions at various levels, including the governance and regulatory levels. As such, um, every role has a part to play and they should not be discarded in view of or because they take too much time or whatever reasons uh, that might be. Um, that brings me to, is it just a whim? So next slide, please. So what, why do I say that? Um, I say this because there are three here that I'm showing out of many, 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 again, due to our time constraints. So rainbow washing, social washing, cherry picking. What does all these mean? So rainbow washing, this pertains to the corporations that publish exaggerated statements supporting the rainbow wheel that is the multicolored SDGs mosaic to conceal disputable commitments to action so as to augment their label and image. So these could very well be in all the projects maybe in, in the same organizations or just some maybe. Now, social washing is when corporations are selling themselves as socially conscious, but in actuality, they don't do anything to strengthen the cause advocated by them in the operations, for example. But statistics also show that it is more prevalent in mining and framing, I mean, sorry, farming uh, projects. Cherry picking. Now that, there are many instances where prioritization is made on the basis of convenience, which some international organizations and policymakers say they find it a challenge. So maybe they're doing it because it's easy for them. Maybe they're doing it because there is no cost involved, or maybe they're already doing it and they just put it on their website or something like that. So it's a huge uh, metonymy, so to speak, right? Next slide, please. So project managers can ensure sustainability of a project in many ways, as you see in the slide. Some of the important ones in my mind are assessing, bringing and making the awareness possible, becoming aware, collaborating, becoming trustworthy, becoming transparent. Um, I think on that note, um, not sure how many of you have heard of return on trust, but there is a way to calculate the return on trust, just like how we do for return on investments. 
So let me show you a quick clip on trust. Next slide, please. If you can just click it, it'll play. Can you hear the sound, guys? No, no sound, uh, Jennifer. That might be because I'm muted. Let's try this again. The story of trust in 2019 is a very important change in the landscape of trust. Trust used to be conveyed from top down, vertically. Then about 10 years ago, it started to move to peer-to-peer, -peer, horizontal through social platforms. Now people only trust that which is very close to them, very local. This year, trust has moved to the employer. My employer is actually a 75% trust globally, a phenomenon born of lack of belief in other institutions. At a time when there's deep dissatisfaction with the system and there's deep fears about loss of jobs to automation um, or to globalization. The cry for help in a way because I can actually trust that which is close to me where I can look in the eyes of my employer. And at the same time, we see an incredible rise in interest in news and, and engagement with mainstream media. People actually deeply want to be informed. 22 point jump, we've never seen something like that. There's a new contract between employer and employee. I wanna work for a company with values that has a purpose, that's answering societal needs. Second, I wanna be informed. I wanna be empowered. I wanna be able to speak up. I wanna feel as if I'm heard. Third. I want my CEO to speak up for me, to actually get into the fray and speak up about diversity or sustainability. And lastly, I want my company to do something in my headquarters city. I want better education, better roads, no longer just that I have a job, but I am part of a movement, part of a mission to improve the world. So this particular video is from 2019, but there are many others that you can see. Um, you can go to Edelman's Trust and you can see many, many more. And finally, what I'll do is I'll end by showing you a contribution of mine to a project management book. Next slide, please. So this here, it's the commitment to sustainability in project partnering. And what that means is that effective, sustainable project partnerships require a structured charter to convert sustainable goals into workable management goals. Moreover, partnerships by nature are shaped up by various changing environments and the stakeholders may alter or may have to adjust their views during the lifespan of their uh, the partnerships. So that's um, sustainability commitment is essential, requiring a thorough governance of governance. In other words, meta governance. In short, sustainability thrives when collaboration includes problem solving with divergent and critical thinking and sometimes spontaneity. So this commitment is what is shown here in this slide. And this is from the book called Contemporary Project Management, which is used by many universities to teach project management. And I use it as well. Uh, next slide, please. So thank you very, very much to the United Nations BRME and IMA again. And uh, I'm going to end by saying, let's commit to sustainability through project partnering, which is exactly what we are doing, what IMA is doing. And it's a wonderful organization. And I think, Jen, you wanted me to do it in 15 minutes. And I think I have. <laughs> I hope I have. You did wonderfully. That was perfect. And uh, thank you so much for that. So okay, gotcha. um, I want to thank you. Do you have any parting words before I close out this session? Well, uh, we as human beings, in my mind, the best thing that we can do is help people to smile. I always like to smile. The reason I'm saying that is because 
health matters because if you have health, you can do anything you want in life, right from birth to death. And it starts with a smile. So let's all smile and then take away our smile to every part of the world. I love that. You know, there's a favorite quote of mine is that, um, you know, happiness is a moral duty because by, by sowing happiness, you, you sow un, unlimited benefits upon the world and other people. Um, it's, it's not always easy to do, but it's important. So um, I want to thank you, Raji, for joining us today. My um, and I want to thank you for joining. This has been the Humanistic Management Lunch and Learn hosted by the International Humanistic Management Association USA chapter. And, um, you know, we encourage you to join if you like this. Um, please join our association and help us fund the work that we do, both with the prime management education and, and creating resources such as this. And there is a link in the chat room for you to do that. Our next session for next month is, uh, I think it's February 25th, and we have Lisa Tabor coming in to talk about diversity from a systems standpoint. And I think she's absolutely brilliant, just as brilliant as Raji has been. So, um, and there's a link to that, so you can register from here. Um, and I wanna thank you all, and we'll see you next month. Bye, and have a wonderful weekend, everyone.